How's it going, everybody? Toby here. Uh, we're going to talk about the HD Homecoming Rally or Welcome Home Rally, whatever they're calling. There's a quote I got that I picked up on this that I think in this case, in, this ter in these terms, apply to Harley Davidson. Okay. I took a lot of notes here because there's a lot of information I want to go over. But the first quote is, do what you do so well that they will want to see it again and bring their friends. That's from, that was from Walt Disney. And I think that if we all look at it honestly, Harley Davidson has done that. They do that really damn well as far as their product, their bikes, the experience, the community, the family that you get when you visit particular, any particular Harley dealership, when you go to rallies, when you go to the museum. I haven't been yet, but I'm looking forward to going this summer. We'll get into that down the, later on. The other quote that I got is, it takes months to find a customer and seconds to lose one. And that was from Vince Lombardi. And I think this rally is one of those pieces that can be, that takes the seconds to lose one, lose a customer or, or many customers. Granted, are they gonna lose a lot of customers? Maybe not, but you're gonna have the Harley <laughs> faithful that are gonna go to this rally, right? But, and you're gonna have others that go, but Consider how much larger of an audience would you have if they did these things differently that I'm about to talk about. Okay, just food for thought. So as I said, I'm not I'm not happy with H Harley Davidson's choices that they've made for this homecoming. You've heard what I'm going to tell you. You've heard some from Baggers and Brewers already. You've heard Mandy the Machine also express her dislike and I'm gonna I'll link both of those videos up here so you guys can see those if you want to go watch them why because first of all Harley Davidson's business any business their job is to make money and make their shareholders happy having said that for the year of 2022 for the entire calendar year they made a revenue of 5.755 billion dollars and that was up almost eight percent from the previous year. Granted, we know that you know the pandemic really hit a lot of places, a lot of butt companies, not not just Harley. They're obviously doing better. Shaping Yak and Zeitz and them are really, you know, they've streamlined the, the products, that the bikes, the models, live wire, they've done a lot of changes, right? Like they come out with a Rev Max in the last few years. They they really they've done a lot of good for their prop for their profit. And here our their customer base is now going to a rally for the 120th year of keeping them in business and we're having to pay in my opinion exorbitant astronomically silly amounts for events there cost of admission and again like i said baggers and brews address this bert and george address this also but i'm going to cover it again so i did a check i went online the day they did the model announcement on january 18th ish i think it was and, tr and tried to do the full pricing like i was going to go through the whole step for both general admission and the VIP admission to see what it would cost. The, and I did it from the guys of me and my wife. My wife and I go to these play, these events together. We go every, everywhere we want to go on the bikes together. So it would be us two people and we go for the full thing, right? It's a weekend basically thing, Thursday through Sunday. So what does that get us? We would, for a general admission for two days, for two people, we would have to pay $400 and $47 and some change for those tickets. General admission, what does that get us? That gets you into the Veterans Park, which we'll also cover. That's not a Harley Davidson owned location. It's just a park nearby the museum, about two miles away. And they're, they, they're gonna lock this place down, whatever, for this for this uh, concert. And we'll get in, I'll tell you the, the, you'll see the lineup here in a minute. For the VIP, the two days, same thing, two days, two people, VIP, is a little over $950. So you're looking at more than double the price for VIP. That was as of January 18th. Right now, the last time I looked was a few days ago, right now there's a waiting list for the VIP tickets. And I do remember when you were when you could first buy the tickets for the VIP, it actually said on the website, prices will go up as demand increases. And they're selling these VIP tickets in batches so they don't overproduce or over manufacture or oversell, so to speak. Sell to me, not have enough. They're selling them in batches. So once they sell out, they decide whether they're going to increase the price or not, and then they'll go to the next batch and so on. Uh, I'm not saying, that, I'm not trying to imply that them selling those tickets out completely in that batch causes them or drives them to increase the price. 
I'm just telling you what their website says. Batches prices will go up as demand increases. What does the VIP version get you in versus the general admission? The VIP version gets you access to like an elevated deck where the other VIPs are going to be and it's like I guess it's an indoor type place maybe enclosed at least or a, it's, and it has air conditioning and it has air conditioned bathrooms it has a lounge with seating and it has lockers and mobile mobile charging spots and you also get a, par a pass for the parade to ride in a parade on Sunday you don't get these things with a general admission when I say this the other parts that are included is they say access to a concierge who will help you find your vendor your food for that you can buy for purchasing vendors up there for purchase so that's they don't really say anything in detail as far as anything you get for free or as a comp for paying that price for those vip tickets you get access to that area the ac the cool ac bathrooms air conditioned bathrooms and stuff seating and all that and access to vendors and food up inside that area for purchase okay so that's not even free maybe you'll see celebrities up there if you're going for the vip tickets i don't know i just i don't think either one of those prices general admission or vip are worth it uh, and so we're not even we that's just the the, the the tickets themselves right so then you're also talking about cost of lodging and we're not even covering gas and whatever for the mileage everybody is, is going to travel to go from wherever they're coming from to get there right so that gas and all that and multiple lodgings if you're going overnight for multiple day trips to get there that all is not even what cost I've even counted on okay so the cost of lodging in a 25 mile radius I looked around the area there the minimum price of the the minimum costing hotel and I mean chain like Holiday Inn Express you know stuff like that is 233 dollars a night okay per night that's 25 plus mile radius around the museum area everything that's within about a half mile from the museum i did have reservations at one of the, at the holiday Inn express that was half a mile away from the m museum back in july last of, of last year when they hit the year out from the day of the, of the of the rally, I made reservation, and it was I was going to be using a lot of points, and it was an obscene amount per night. I will not lie; it's it was pretty expensive. It was way over the two thirty three. It's probably I think if I remember right, it was like between two or between three and four hundred total. But I'm again, I don't remember for sure. But as soon as I saw them with the prices for paying for these tickets for the concerts. I canceled my reservations entirely. Um, I thought about holding on to it for somebody else that might have wanted them, but I was like, I, I you know, as much as as I've heard from other friends and riders about this cost of this of the of the tickets and everything up there, there were a lot of people that just weren't interested. And I, I was like, if you're not if they're not going to pay the price for the tickets for the VIP or the general admission, why would they pay the price of that hotel fee like that? I mean, if I'm thinking to cancel, I'm sure other people are too. So. But yeah, like I said, 25 mile radius around the museum. The cheapest ticket or the cheapest hotel I found was 230 bucks plus or minus a night. And it goes up from there. <laughs> okay, so it's it was pretty crazy. So like I said, y'all, the location of the concerts is gonna be at Veterans Park. And it's about 2.2 or two miles away. It's like northeast of the museum. And I know little to nothing about the park. I tried to do some research to find out how much it would cost like for HD to rent the place or anything like that. And there were some very generic and very gray minimal fees, but I'm not gonna, so I won't cover that. I won't, I, I can't talk about that. I will say this though. I did look up an article from, I think it was 2015. If I'm wrong, I'll put the date here in the, in the screen. Back in around that, at the time of that article, I do know it costs at minimum to book the Foo Fighters or to book Green Day for a concert like this. It was a minimum of like $500,000 per band. So that was the going rate to book Green Day or the going rate to book Foo Fighters, not including all the other uh, cons all the other lineup people, Joan Jett or anybody else, right? Are they expensive? Yes. Uh, do I think that 
you should be charging your the, the people who got you to this point that amount of money for a VIP ticket just so that you can make a profit off of that. And even if they're not making a profit, look, I would say that in my opinion, Harley should be considering making this a break even thing or even take a loss on it a little bit. I mean, hell, do it nonprofit and try to raise money for a valid veteran cause or homeless cause or something instead of trying to raise put all this money out. I haven't seen anything from anywhere. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Nothing on their websites or anything to say that all the money or any of the proceeds from the ticket purchases or sales or anything are going to go towards any nonprofit or any type of charity. That would be a nice way to go. I would consider it for that. I wouldn't pay those prices still, but I would, you know, that's at least something. So what are we doing? There's like six dealerships in and around the area of the museum that are also, you can go on their on the HD's website for the for the 120th rally, and all the, the House of Harley in Greenfield, in Greenfield, Wisconsin, Milwaukee HD, uh, Suburban Motors HD is in Thanesville, Wisconsin. You got Ukes HD, which is in Kenosha, West Bend Harley, which is in West Bend. And then Wisconsin HD, which is in Okanomawak, Wisconsin. And all these are anywhere from 900 miles out to 30 miles away, which that's no different than going from Spearfish to Rapid City or riding around Custer and this Custer State Park and the Rush Moors and all that and heading back up to Rapid City. So if you've been to Sturgis, these distances are nothing. If you've ridden on a motorcycle and you've gone to the museum or gone to this, if you're coming for this, these distances are nothing right but every one of these dealerships are participating in some way form or fashion in the welcome home rally they're going to be hosting their own events their or their own bands their own vendors food etc at those particular locations so you don't got to try go pay nine hundred dollars or four hundred dollars or more or whatever for vip tickets just to go see the, the headliners that are on that lineup for at the Veterans Park. So we're going to go hang out, see Dez, Badgers, I know there's a bunch of other people. Ryan Full Throttle Hog is going to be there, Adam Sandoval is going to be there. I know there's a, several others. I'm looking forward to meeting people up there, vloggers especially. I hope to see you all up there and if you see me, feel free to come up and say hello, shake a hand, I'd love to meet you. I, I'm still not used to that. Somebody called my name out in Sturgis, said it was another motor vlogger. I was like, uh, okay, cool, nice to meet you too, you know? And that was uh, the Upshift Podcast, I think, Dave, that I believe his name was. If it's Daniel, I apologize, brother. I'm, I forget, I'm terrible with names. Anybody will tell you that. We are gonna ride those things, okay? We're gonna hit each of those dealerships and enjoy ourselves around that area. Thank you for watching. Again, these are just my opinions. If you disagree, feel free to put in the comments. If you agree, tell me about your experience. If you've researched anything, if you were considering going to this route to this rally, feel free to leave me a comment. And make sure you, I, I usually do not say the whole like, subscribe, hit the bell thing, y'all. Anybody who's watched my stuff knows and sees I don't do that. If you're gonna do it, you'll do it. Everybody knows YouTube well enough by now. I will say it this time because I am gonna go to the rally, as I said before, and I'm going to do a on-location recording of what goes on up there, see the dealers that we're going to, see what you can get from a semi-free perspective, if you will, okay? So stick around, I hope you check it out for the second one. I hope you like this video. And hope you look forward to the next one, because I know I'm going to look forward to making it for you. Take care.